Hi, this is Adam from Inflectra, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can log defects or incidents using SpiraTest. So the first thing we're going to do today is log in using the administrator account, and the password is please change, and please do change it if you haven't already. And when you log into SpiraTest, uh, we're going to choose a sample application, uh, sample application 2. And if you've been watching other videos in this series, you'll know that we've actually already created some requirements, some test cases, and logged a defect during testing. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how you could log an incident outside of testing. So you just want to log a defect that was found during development. So to do that, first you can go to Tracking Incidents to go to the main incident page. And you can click on the New Incident button. Secondly, if you're on the My page, which is where you often are if you're going to be looking at the items assigned to you, there is a quick launch where you can say quick create incident in a specific application or project. And that's really handy if you want to create incidents in different projects really quickly. So we could click on the plus button. And the last one is the most handy of all, in my opinion. You can just do shift I on the keyboard and that takes you to the new incident logging page from wherever you are on the application. So we are now on that page and we have to enter an incident name. So let's pretend we found a failure uh, logging into the system that gave us a, a timeout. So let's say timeout error on login page. And we're going to choose the release. Let's say we were testing the second release and we had the issue. And the priority is pretty high because you can't get in without it. And we could just put the other information, but for right now, I think we'll leave that. And in the description, I'm going to describe what happened. Now, this is not a test case, so there's no automatic pre-population of the description or expected results. You need to write down what happened. So I will say I logged in with the user, you know, Joe Smith and the system gave me a SQL timeout error. And you can use the handy formatting that we have inside of SpiraTest to put in some, some examples of code. So, you know, SQL error 500, you know, system timeout or something like that. Okay, and it will format it like that, which is quite nice. We might want a screenshot too. See this screenshot for more detail. I'll just do print screen paste. There's my screenshot. And again, I just pasted in the current screen. So it's a screenshot of me pasting in the screenshot. But in real life, you'll put it in the screenshot of the timeout error. I could have a comment. I don't think I need one right now. So I'll hit save. And when I save it, it's going to be added to the incident list. So if I go into tracking incidents, there's my new defect, timeout error on login page. So I want to assign that to someone to fix. So I'm going to assign that to Fred, our developer. So I'm going to go to the operations and say assign incident. And I'm going to choose Fred. And I'm going to tell Fred, we've got to fix this in the current release. We can't wait to another release. And this is pretty severe. I mean, lots of people are calling me. So let's write some notes. You know, hi, uh, Fred. This is really important. We need a fix. ASAP. Hit save. That's then going to send an email to Fred, who's then going to go in and fix or see the defect and hopefully fix it for us. So I'm going to log in as Fred. And when Fred comes in, he's going to see the incidents, timer error on login page. Click on it. And I forgot to categorize as a bug, so I think I'm going to do that. I save, it's a bug. And let's pretend I fixed the bug. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to fix it. So I'll say resolve. Now, if I couldn't reproduce the issue, you you could easily say unable to reproduce and add a comment and send it back to the person. Um, this time I'm going to say resolved. So I'm going to fix it. Okay. And I'm going to describe what I did. Again, you know, I fixed the DB connection string. Something else like that. That's fine. Hit save. And then if I go back to, as my original user, and hit refresh. It's assigned back with resolved. I also get an email as this admin saying, you've been reassigned this. And if I look at the history, I can even see what's been going on. Okay. Fred resolved it. It was closed on that date and time. Excellent. And I could go back here and say, you know what? Let's pretend I can't see it's fixed. For me, it's still a problem. It's still not working. So I could reopen it or I could decide that actually it is fixed. So depending on what your role is, depending on if it's been assigned to you, um, you may have different permissions. So I only have the option to close it. Depending if it was assigned to me or as a different role, I might have the option to reopen it as well. And you can configure that in the workflow. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, you know what? He did a good job, it's fixed. Close it. And I can say verified in, the, in release 2.0. Hit save, and now my defect is closed. Excellent. And that's very handy. If I go back into my incident view, I can see in the graphs that we have two closed defects, which is very nice. And if I go into the reporting section, 
I can see a few more graphs too. Now, obviously, we only have two defects in the system, so it's not all that exciting. We've got two defects logged. We can look at the progress rate, the cumulative count, and the open count, the count by status. It's not the most exciting of graphs. So if we change it to one of our other projects, just to show you, you can see this is a graph with a bit more data in it. You can see when we run test cases using the test run graph. You can see in the defects side, the defect count by status, the progress rate of when we've been closing them and when we've been opening them, the net open count by priority, and by status as well. And you can filter it by type. If I just want bugs, I can do that as well. I can export the data to a data grid or to an image. Um, also, I might want to do something where I want to see the other information. So if I go to the instant graphs, I can see some predefined graphs like instant aging or instant turnaround time. And this is very handy to see. Do we have lots of bugs that are lingering or are we doing a good job in closing them in time? And then the last thing is we might want to add a graph to do a bit more analysis, we can go to the list of widgets and we can add the incident summary graph right here. So I'll choose that one. I'll hit add. Oh, make sure you choose to add it to the top, left side or right side. You don't want it appearing over here. I mean, you can, it's up to you. Hit add. You can move things around if you put it in the wrong place, so don't worry. There's our incident summary graph. And when it reloads, we'll see we have the options to choose any of our fields. So we could look at priority, versus uh, status, and there we go. So we can see these are our defects. The x-axis is the priority, and they're grouped by color by status. And you can highlight a color just to see the one that you're interested in. These are our not reproducible ones. These are our open ones. These are our closed ones, for example. Or I can flip the axis and say, I want priority by status. So that way I can see it the other way around as well. These are my statuses, and then these are my colors. These are the critical ones, the high ones, the medium ones. I don't care about the low ones, but there they are. So that way, if I'm really interested in critical, I can see my distribution. So the graph lets you see everything and lets you see by hiding on a color what you're interested in. And you can get a data grid as well and open it in an Excel sheet if you want more information. So that's how you would uh, log a defect outside of testing, how you would triage it, fix it, and then report on the defects and other items to see the progress you're making. So I hope that was helpful. If you'd like to see more videos on using SpiroTest for test management, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and please let us know if you'd like to see any other videos by writing in the comments. Thanks so much.